Senator Van Hollen, Senator Smith of Minnesota. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and welcome to all of you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, so I want to focus my questions to uh, you, Mr. Coase, and I'm going to focus for a minute on rural transit. Uh, so I chair the transit subcommittee, and I also represent a state with large communities of many communities of rural places and small towns. And I know that mostly when we talk about transit, um, as my good friend from Maryland is, you know, we, talk, we think about what goes on in big cities. We think about big buses and trains. But of course, we know there's an incredibly important network of rural transit agencies across the country, including in Minnesota. And we also know that the bipartisan infrastructure law put significant new resources into rural transit and increased funding for programs like bus grants and low and no grants um, that really benefit rural agencies as well. Minnesota has received two of these grants from the FTA for rural transit, one for SMART, which is based in Austin, Minnesota, to build two new transit facilities, and one for um, UCAP and friendly rider transit to buy propane buses. Um, and then install the, the fueling infrastructure that they need. So I think that one of the best things about the Bipartisan Infrastructure and Jobs um, Act is that it is lifting up all of these communities, including rural communities, um, that often have many people who rely on uh, transit to get around. So could you just give us a sort of at a high level um, what your view is of how uh, the Biden infrastructure law has really um, supported rural transit around the country? Uh, Senator, thank you uh, for that question and also your leadership on this topic. Um, as someone uh, who grew up in rural southwest Georgia uh, with a mother who was disabled, I know firsthand the importance of rural transit. Being able to get an elderly grandmother to a doctor's event, uh, appointment or just to be able to take a father to a veteran's hospital without having a car, rural transit was a lifeline. So I can tell you, because of the bipartisan infrastructure law, we've now seen historic resources going directly to rural transit through formula dollars, but also through our discretionary dollars. We have now over $11 billion of the bipartisan interest law, which represents close to $35 billion of resources, going directly to meet the unique needs of rural communities. That would not have happened without the bipartisan interest law. Thank you. I think it just um, illustrates how this law has helped so many rural communities in so many, so many ways. And I also know that rural transit authorities tend to be small, they're scrappy, they're very innovative, um, and they don't have a big grants department uh, that they can rely on to go and, and chase these federal dollars. So I know that you all have put a lot of um, time and energy into figuring out how to help rural transit authorities navigate through these different uh, federal grant opportunities and reporting requirements that also follow. Could you just tell us a little bit about that work? Because I think it's important for people to understand. Absolutely. We have stood up uh, within the department a number of <laughs> rural-specific programs to provide direct technical assistance. We have a $20 million technical assistance program directly for rural and tribal communities to not only understand how to navigate the federal process, but also how to deliver a project. Because sometimes that rural mayor or that transit robber, it may be also the planner, but also might right. be uh, doing other five other jobs. And so the federal government government can't just be on the sidelines. We want to be a partner. Um, in addition to that, we also know um, that we want to support rural communities as we prepare for the 21st century. We have uh, stood up a new rural EV uh, toolkit that provides rural communities the step-by-step -step process mm -hmm. to make sure that they're not left behind with the electrical vehicle revolution. But also, we're seeing amazing innovation where Rural communities working with state DOTs are partnering with private companies. For example, we awarded $9 million to the North Carolina DOT to partner with nine rural counties and VIA to provide on-demand services for those uh, residents. That's just an example of how we can meet the needs, but also prepare rural communities for the front. And that's what the bipartisan infrastructure law allows us to do. I really appreciate that. I, I also appreciate you highlighting the innovation that we see happening in these rural transit agencies that um, have to be creative because mm -hmm. uh, the models that might work in a larger city are just not going to work there. Exactly. And so they are doing some pretty incredible work to make sure that people have can get around and can be connected. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, thanks, Senator Smith. I um, 